Hey guys, welcome back to Monster Plays, and today we are going to be reacting to the Vida Vida Carnes Living Meat Research Documentary 1 Intro and the Crawl. Um, I'm already um, in my little sweater. This is me right now. I'm all ready and prepared, but. So, um, I was planning on reacting to some, like, scary stuff, like FNAF VHS tapes or something like that, but somebody already recommended me to watch some stuff, so I was like, I bet. And this video is only five minutes long, so it's perfect for like a little reaction video. But um, let's 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 just, let's just get into it. All right, this video talks about the show imagery, graphic content like gore, violence, and death. View discretion is advised. In flashing lights, Fred uh, provides several. Okay, I'm not gonna read all that. I'm un poco asustado. I'm not gonna lie. On planet Earth, life has thrived for millions of years. Mm -hmm. Creatures big and small have found ways to adapt and evolve to flourish in all types of environments okay from barren wastes to lush forests life can be found earth has home these creatures Those fossils the of life itself only until very recently things have changed oh god what are those life forms have appeared all around look like the end of squirt guns changing the balance of nature and what we know about evolution itself okay that is why we at national living meat research have been studying these Yo, what kind of company name is that, bro? Y'all gotta educate everyone about these creatures. Y'all gotta rebrand. First, what are these new life forms? Since their explosive arrival across the globe in 1931, Holy crap. there has been much debate on what these newcomers are and where they came from. It's off the chart. Are they extraterrestrials coming to invade Earth, or are they demons who come from hell to purge humanity? I don't even know what they are, explain. From what our scientists have discovered, no. The origins of these creatures are solely to Earth, miraculously out of nowhere. We don't know why or how, but one thing is for certain, Earth is now their home. Uh -huh. What these creatures are is mysterious and still not well known today. But here is what we do know. These creatures are comprised mainly of muscle oh, tissue, Oh god, organs, are these skinwalkers? They greatly resemble animals with no skin or store-bought meat. Ugh. Because of these characteristics, they have been named accordingly as Vita Carnies. Okay. The carny species consume decaying, organic matter, but their main diet is composed of raw meat, not including their carnies' relatives. Okay. The carnies only appear in places where there is an abundance of crawl, which leads to the first creature of the carnies' species, the crawl. The crawl is a growth of meaty tendrils that closely resemble the small uh -huh. intestine, the only difference being the dark red coloration. These tendrils grow in a similar pattern as vines, mold, or fungi. Okay. A primary stem structure is the host of divisions of other, smaller branches, and each tendril contains a variety of veins, arteries. I'm getting walking, not walking dead. I'm getting Last of Us vibe with like the, the fungi and everything. The ends of these tendrils are equipped with organelles used to absorb water and organic matter necessary for growth. The source of these organic materials is mainly found in dirt and soil on surrounding surfaces. Oh god, not the Using real images. Like tendrils, it absorbs the material and processes it into usable energy. Uh -huh. Although, the crawl also obtains energy through another means. Huh? Using a sophisticated form of photosynthesis, the dark pigmentation of the smaller branches is ideal for absorbing sunlight and therefore allowing solar energy to fuel the crawl's growth. Because of its efficiency, it thrives in almost all types of environments, right. easily allowing it to spread across the world and can be found pretty much anywhere. Its recent inclusion Where's the music? in the ecosystem has caused many major changes in okay, nature's balance. One may assume that the crawl's presence may outcompete any other competitors. Oh God. But due to its unique life cycle, where old branches fall off and decay into nutrient rich compost, all forms of. Why do I feel like a sinister vibe from this? Like, what's going like, towards. Like, it's like. Hey. The crawl's abundance grants plenty of nourishment to all animals, from plants feeding on the decayed crawl, herbivores thriving on increased plant population, and carnivores feeding on both the abundant prey, and are able to eat the crawl as well. Okay. The presence of all these animals leave behind waste, which will be broken down and consumed by the crawl, and the cycle begins again. Uh -huh. This form of symbiosis leads to an environment where all populations thrive. Right. 
Humanity also uses the crawl to Yo, what kind of human being is that? Because of the supernatural rate of growth. <gasps> nutrients. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I don't like I don't like how it does that, bro. Wait, hold on, go back, go back. Y'all see this? Who is this? Is this a person or am I like just overthinking it? Nutrients. All right. It's been sustainably cultivated That's the into crawl? Why does it look like that? The crawl is harvested and processed into fertilizer, which greatly increases crop yield and quality. The crawl right. may also be used as a food source for humans, mm -hmm. and reliably so. But due to its unkindly appearance and taste, it looks like carnage. Like that, that's carnage right there. The crawl also plays a very important role in the next creatures that we have been studying. Sometimes, in a crawl populated environment, a node of meat may develop on one of the branches. This node will fall off and grow into a functioning organism right. and go to live on as an independent animal. This leads us to the upcoming species that we will be discussing. The first of these creatures are the trees. There's multiple. Oh, wee, 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 wee. Is that it? Go back, go back, go back. Okay, okay, that's the end of the video. Hold on, go back, go back. There's more creatures. Hold on, the let me see the image that flashed. It's going too fast. Hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is literally, this is really all I can get. King, a prince it looks like, and a, and a king. Okay, so the video's only been going on for like seven minutes, and like probably editing, it's gonna be like six minutes. Let's just watch the second one, why not? Vrida Carnes Living Meats Research Documentary 2. Trimmings. And it just says the same crap, so we're just gonna skip it. Trimmings are small animals That's what they look like? It's just some like meat candy and crap right here. Small eyes, nose and ear holes, and then a gaped mouth. They are also equipped with a diversity of limbs. Uh huh. All individual trimmings are unique, each with a different body shape, number of limbs, and other characteristics. Oh god, they turn into dragons? One thing they all share in common is that they are made mostly of meat tissue. The origin story of Game of Thrones. In length, no 27 meters? Oh my god. So I can just like squash it, I can stomp on it. Right. Although it isn't omnivore, being able to hunt meat and forage for plant matter, trimmings are almost entirely scavengers. Their diet consists of rotting plants and meat, including, but not limited to, uh -huh. fruits, vegetables, fruits, fruits seeds, fruits, seeds insects, insects, and dead animals. And deceased animals. Although its appearance is uh... unlikely, it is a cowardly creature, only fleeing, screeching, and hiding when threatened. Uh huh. Because of its lack of defensive traits, it lies near the bottom of the food chain, making it easily overpowered and picked off very regularly by predators. Right. Naturally, its population would eventually die out. Not whoa, 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 okay, okay, we'll have to go back to see that. Constantly produces a large quantity of trimming notes, keeping up their numbers. It's getting out of control, I can hear it. Naturally, trimmings can be found wherever there is abundant crawl. Trimmings grow at a decent pace, reaching maturity at around seven. It's like faster now. Having a maximum lifespan of two to four years. Two to four years? Alright, weak sauce. Although they are plentiful, humanity has no proper way to implement trimmings into society. Their overabundance is Ooh. due to them digging through trash bins and making excessive noise at night. Besides all of this, some people Oh why and relatively domesticate them. Why? Trimmings are a wondrous creature. From their plentiful numbers to their skittish nature, they are truly a thing to behold. The next species on our list is the meat snake. Oh, uh, nah, buddy. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go back, go back. Okay, mass trimming infestation. Estimated 400 plus trimmings gathered under a large abandoned satellite dish. The reason one, and then blank, 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 blank. Oh, okay. Vrida Carnes Living Meat Research Documentary 3 Meat Snakes. The meat snake is a worm like Dude. creature made of a variety of types of meat, coated in a transparent, skin like membrane. Yeah, whoever drew those, though, like, mad, mad respect. Its size varies during its lifespan, depending on how much it consumes. When it first separates uh, from the crawl, it is only like a, a chest few centimeters in length. Eventually, 
It will reach an average length of five meters. Bro. Under extreme conditions, like natural disasters, war, or plague, Hello? it can greatly surpass Okay, there's life. another one, there's another one, there's another one, okay. The meat snake's diet consists entirely one. of dead animals or parts. A meat snake is incapable of consuming a healthy, living organism. The meat snake allocates its food by using a tongue-like organ covered in sensors to touch and feel its environment. The sensors catch particles of nah, the bro. meat, notifying the meat snake that there is food nearby. This process shares many similarities to regular snakes, hence the meat snake's name. Once it locates the corpse, the meat snake will open its jaw and swallow the entire Oh my body god! Whole. Once the entire body is consumed, the meat snake's stomach will release a variety of chemicals. Some will break down soft tissue like skin, and the connection points between muscles. Others' chemicals will then ferment and preserve the tissue to keep it from breaking down for as long as possible. After that, the remaining flesh and bones will move along the meat snake's tract, and slowly be implemented into its own structure, extending the meat snake. Dude! How big can it get? Factory parts like skulls, pelvises, hair, and fingernails will be excreted. Mm. Speaking of skulls, the meat snake will take the skull from the consumed organism and use it as its own. Each no, meat it won't. snake has its own skull. No, I, yo. Corresponding to what that Is that a human skull? Consumed. No. During its lifespan, it will swap no, a human face to like freaking a meat worm snake. snake. depends entirely on how much a meat snake consumes. The longest one has lived for was 28 years. Oh my god! The meat snake has no predators and is immune to disease due to its preserving chemicals. The only significant ways a meat snake can die is through starvation, burning, or complete destruction of the meat snake's membrane coating. Interestingly, Dude. the meat snake is the only member of the Carnies family that is able to reproduce. When a meat snake reaches an excessive size and is in the conditions to do so, it will commence mitosis. What is bro? Into then the now two meat snakes will go on their separate ways and live on as two distinct organisms. Meat snakes can only be found in moderate temperature climates, not too hot, not too cold. Bro. Their population depends entirely on the amount of corpses available. Where there is death, there are meat snakes. Humanity will use them to our advantage. Meat snakes are a very efficient and clean way of disposing of any meat products. The preserving fluid within the meat Don't feed those things. Infects the carrion, preventing the spread of disease. Humans use meat snakes in butcher shops as a waste bin, dispose roadkill, within war on the battlefield to dispose of festering bodies and parts, and within zoos to dispose of deceased. Okay, so say you dispose a body, and it gets like enormously, like, like freaking humongous, what do you do then? Like, if you use it as a disposal, like a trash bin outside your store, then what if you have, like, a freaking, like, 50 foot long snake? Tame, not caring if any creature is around them, only acting defensively when it is within consuming a meal. This means they are very easy to tame. Overall, oh my. meat snakes are Ooh. a very interesting way of sustaining itself. It is an amazing experience to encounter one, as long as you don't mind the smell. Our next creature is the No, no. 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 That that's enough. Yep, that's enough for one day. Okay, so I was able to get this part. Alter being stranded at sea, the young prince eventually was cast to an island injured. The prince stumbled his way into a nearby cave. The prince used the what magic he could to put himself in a healing sleep. Okay, so this does go on to like the the, the king, queen, and prince thing we saw earlier. Okay, so I can't really find the, um, the thing that happened earlier, but I don't think it really matters. But, um, if you guys enjoyed today's Vrida Karnis documentary reaction, uh, I will be watching more. Uh, leave those up, subscribe to you, and click that bell, and I will talk to y'all later.